Okay, well, since you've done the first section or the first part of this section, 10.4a, uh, let's take a look at 10.4b. The setup of this is, is very similar. Again, we're just going to look at some problems from your homework. Again, uh, the idea here is sample spaces and probabilities for compound events. Remember, we've got more than one thing going on. We've got several choices going on, several options at the same time. And what we want to do here is we kind of want to build and, and kind of come to understand is there a pattern to what goes on here? Could we figure this out another way? Do we have to do a tree diagram every single time? Um, if we do, that's fine. I mean, they are pretty helpful, and it, it is kind of nice to physically see what those what those options are. But is there another way where we could come up with the answers? So the instructions on this one say create a tree diagram, so we definitely need to do that uh, to show the sample space. So we are trying to find the sample space for each of the compound events. And again, just uh, kind of emphasizing the idea of a compound event. Use initials or abbreviations to keep the outcomes as simple as possible. Write small, you'll need the space. So remember, we're going to do a tree diagram for problem number one right over here. Uh, there's not a ton of space. So let's make sure as we as we read through this, we've saved enough room. So it says the triplex theater has the following movies and showtimes. Bucket of Fun, The Great Bozo, and Pickle Man. Um, and then we've got a choice after we choose the movie, we can either go to the early show or the late show. Now, since um, the, the movies are listed first, um, we're going to go ahead and pick the movie first, and then we're going to either choose the early show or the late show. Um, and if any of you haven't seen these, these are great shows, especially Pickle Man. The, the, the language is a little bit salty, but I think it's a pretty good show. All right, so the movie we're going to choose, and then we're going to choose the time. So I'm going to write movie here and then time here. And I'm going to write fairly small so we can make sure that we can fit this in. So here's what happens. Um, let's see, Bucket of Fun, Great Bozo, and Pickle Man. So I'm going to use a B for Bucket of Fun, G for the Great Bozo, and P for Pickle Man. And luckily, none of these, these letters kind of overlap or anything. And then we've got, let's see, early and late. So if I just use a B, G, and P, so we've got bucket of fun, and I'm going to put it down here. I wouldn't want to put it on the top because I've got to have room for this uh, tree diagram to spread out. So I've got bucket, B, and then great, um, and then pickle man right here. And then I've got a choice. Once I choose the movie, I've got to choose the time. So the time is either the early show or the late show. Early show or the late show. Early show or the late show. So on this one, it's it's a pretty simple tree diagram. And let's write the outcome here. Now, I'm not going to draw a line for every one of these, but I'm going to say B, E, B, L meaning this is bucket of fun early show, bucket of fun late show. So this, of course, would be G, E, and G, L, and then we're going to have P, E, and then P, L. All right, so again, this we've got uh, the great bozo early show, great bozo late show, pickle man early show, pickle man late show. So we've got these guys right here. So then it says, how many outcomes are there in the sample space? Well, the sample space isn't just which three movies we go to or the times that we can go to. They're the combination of those. They're that compound event. We've got to make two choices here. So they're these outcomes right here. So there are actually six outcomes in the sample space. It says pick one outcome in the sample space and explain what it means. So I'm going to grab this one right here. I'm going to write down P-E, and I'm going to say this. It means pickle man, pickle man, and we said E, so this is going to be early show. So all we're looking at here is can you identify, once you've kind of abbreviated everything and, and kept track of how many um, outcomes there are, can you explain what each one of those little abbreviations mean? Now it says how many options are there for the first choice? Now what we mean by that is if you go through and say, okay, the first choice we were making was the movie. How many choices did we have? We had three choices. Okay. The second choice we had to make on this one was what time? We had two choices. And that's it. That's all you have to do here. No probabilities or anything like that. We just want to go through and, and do those. Now, if you'll take a look here, I don't have an asterisk by either one of those. We'd have, we've got the same amount of space here. We've got the same setup here. This one happens to be about a cell phone company. And then this one right here, bottom of the first page, we're getting close there. This one is about Jen's soccer team. She's going to play in a four-game tournament. Now, when she plays a tournament... Um, she's either going to win the game or lose the game. And then she's going to go on to the next one, either win or lose. Same thing for the third one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put game one, game two, game three, 
and game four. Now, we don't have a whole lot of space here, but I want you to think about what's going to happen. We only have two outcomes for uh, game one. She's either going to win or she's going to lose. Now, I put this much space here for a reason. Now, watch what's going to happen here. When she plays the second game, it's win or lose. Now, as you've seen as we've been doing these tree diagrams, especially from the previous uh, uh, practice worksheet, um, this is going to spread out, and this is going to be a win or a loss, and that's going to be a win or a loss, and that's going to spread out and be a win or a loss, and that's going to spread out and be a win or a loss. And what ends up happening here is we end up bunching these together a whole lot. So here's what we've got. I've taken care of the, the tree diagram for just the top half, for just the win on the first game. Win or loss on the second one, win or loss on the third one, win or loss on the fourth one. Now, if I go through and I track this, this is a win for all of them, all four of them. Win, win, win. Win, 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 lose. Win, win, lose, win. Win, win, lose, win. Win, win, lose, lose. And then win, lose win 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 lose win 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 lose win lose whoops l and then w l and then this one right here win lose lose win win lose lose win and then win lose 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 okay now it's important to kind of keep these straight and and give yourself enough space because now i've got a bunch this same type of grouping, the same diagram uh, for the win on the first one for a lose on the first one. So we're going to spread out and we're going to do win-lose, win-lose, win-lose. And then I've got to do the same thing here, win-lose, win-lose. And I'm kind of running out of space here. I hope I can fit all this in. Looks like I'm going to be okay. Uh, let's see, win-lose. So we've got a lose and the rest are wins, so lose, win, win, win. A lose, win, win, lose. Lose, win, win, lose. Now notice what happens here. The first three are the same, and then we've got a win or lose. The first three are the same, and then we've got a win or a lose. So let's figure out what this next one is. It would be a lose, win, lose, and then a win, a lose, win, lose, and then a lose. A lose, win, lose, and then a lose. Okay, so we're, we're, we're down to right here. Okay, let's do this next one. Lose, lose, win, win. Uh, let's see, lose, lose, win, lose. And now we're down to the bottom here. Lose, 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 win. Lose, 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 win. And then lose, 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 lose. Now, if we count these up, so this was, if I group these together, oops, let me erase that so this looks a little bit better. If I group those together, we've got four here and four here, so that's eight. This should be the same because the only difference was what we started out with, whether it was a win or lose on the first game. So there's four here, and so there's eight there. So that means there are 16 different outcomes. And then it says how many outcomes are there for the first game? Well, there are two outcomes for the first game. Then it says how many outcomes are there for the second game. Now, you have to be careful about this. For the second game, they can either win or lose. You don't count up all of these. You're just saying, well, you could either win or lose. It doesn't matter what happened on the first one. So there are two outcomes for that one. What can happen on the third game? Again, you're not counting up how many branches there are here. You're just counting the outcomes. You can either win or lose. These are just copies of those win or lose. So there's only two outcomes there and two outcomes there. Now, do you notice anything as we've gone through and done this worksheet and done the worksheet yesterday? Do you notice anything about how many choices there are at each level and how many outcomes there are altogether? So, for instance, we had three choices for movies and two choices for times, and we ended up with six outcomes in our sample space. On this one, we had four different choices, but we had two choices at each level. So the first game, the, not really a choice um, on this particular one. So it's either a win or a loss, so two outcomes there, two outcomes here, two outcomes here, two outcomes here. And if you want to think of those as choices or outcomes, I kind of like saying choices because it seems to make a little bit more sense. But if we've got two choices here and two choices here and two choices here and two choices here, we end up with 16 altogether. So here's the question. 
What do you notice about the number of options or choices for each individual event or choice, like we were talking about up here, and the total number of outcomes in the compound event? So do you notice anything about these numbers here and that number there? Do you notice anything about these numbers here and that number there? Okay, that's what you want to spend a little bit of time thinking about. And then let's take a look at the back side. Let me shrink this down just a tad so we can see what's going on here. It says, use what you learned on the previous page to answer the following questions. Now, I want you to spend a little bit of time thinking about this. Um, have you noticed a pattern between these numbers and that number? Have you noticed a pattern about these numbers and that number right there? If you have, I'm hoping you've noticed that you take the number of choices at each level and you multiply them all together. So for instance, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And in fact, 2 times 2 is, there are the four outcomes here, times 2 would be 8, there are the 8 different branches right there, times 2, there are the ends of those 16 branches right here. Um, on this one, 3 times 2 is 6. So you can just multiply the number of choices at each level and figure out what the answer is. Now, that doesn't help you actually identify each one of them. It just tells you how many there are. So you've got to be careful. This is a nice little shortcut, but it doesn't do everything for you. So it says, use what you learned on the previous page to answer the following questions. You do not need to create a tree diagram unless you find it helpful. So on this one right here, it says we've got this uh, laptop company that offers the following options. For a screen, you can have a small, medium, or large. Um, for memory, you can have 4 gigs, 6 gigs, or 8 gigs. And then for color, you can have gray, blue, or white. Any one of those are okay. So how many choices are there? How many options are there for the first choice? Well, small, medium, or large, so that's going to be three. Um, memory, uh, four, six, or eight, so that's going to be three choices there. And three choices for this one right here. So how many outcomes are there in the sample space? Well, if what we did up here is correct, we just multiply these together. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So there's our answer. And then the last thing here is kind of our check to make sure that we actually understand what's going on and why the sample space that we came up with on these examples is still really important. It says this. It says list at least two of the outcomes in the sample space, and it would be really good if you explained what they meant. So one thing that we could do is we could say, well, I got a small computer with 4 gigs and it was gray. So S4G man means that we got a small screen, 4 gigs, um, and that it was gray. Let's do another one. You can pick any one you want. Let's do a large one, 6 gigs, and let's say that it's white. So large, 6, and white. Now, um, in order to do a tree diagram for this, remember, the most we've had so far, I think, is 20 outcomes in our sample space. This one would have 27 outcomes in our sample space. Pretty stuff, tough to fit that in. So um, this kind of saves us a little bit of work. Um, and all we have to do is know, OK, if we had to list some of these outcomes that we could actually go through and do it or make a tree diagram if that was helpful. So let's take a look at number eight and we'll look at number 10 really quickly. And I'm not going to do these for you, but I am going to set them up a little bit. It says a bag contains three ping pong balls, one red, one blue and one green. A ball is drawn, the color is noted, and then it's returned to the bag. And then a second ball is drawn. So they're going to do two things. They're going to draw a ball, put it back, note the color, put it back in, and then draw another one. Okay, this is called uh, drawing or sampling with replacement. Okay, so we're actually replacing it. So what are the no options for the first draw? So there's red, blue, or green. So there are three options there. What are the options for the second one? Well, since we put whatever color we got out the first time we put it back in, there's still going to be three. So how many outcomes are there in the sample space? That means there would be three times three, so that means there would be nine. So we want to list at least two of the outcomes in the sample space. Well, one thing that could happen is, what if we draw red? Well, you could pick any color you want for the second one. You could even do a red, because you drew a red, you put it back in, you happen to draw it again. But what would happen a lot of times is we end up, we draw a blue, and then we put it back in and we happen to draw, draw a green or something like that. So we've listed a couple of the outcomes in the, in the sample space. Now, if we take a look at number 10, all I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to read the instructions and I want you to think about it for a sec. It says a box contains three socks, a black, a white, and a brown. What is the sample space for drawing a single sock, not returning it to the sock box, and then drawing, drawing a second sock? 
This is called drawing without replacement. So before we drew a marble and then we noted its color and we put it back in. We replaced it so the, the number of choices the next time are exactly the same. This is not that case. What happens here is we draw out a sock, we note the color, but we don't put it back in. So you want to stop and think. If I'm drawing the first time, how many socks are in there? And if I don't put that one back in that I drew the first time, how many socks are there the second time? And then you want to figure out what some of those uh, outcomes are. So I'm going to leave that one to you. That's a great problem. Again, this is called sampling or drawing with replacement, and this is called drawing or sampling without replacement. So great problems there. Um, go ahead and get done with that assignment. We did about half of it for you.